What's up everybody? Hey, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and we're finally taking a tour of the Red Toolbox. All right, so this is my work toolbox, the big boy as I call it. I purchased this Snap-on KRL series in early 2009, upgraded from a Mac uh, Tech 1000 triple bank toolbox. You know, I really like the triple bank. I like having the extra smaller bank on either the right or the left side. This one happens to be on the right side. So this is, while I primarily work out of my roll cart and have for many, many, many years, this is where all the bigger tools go. The things that I maybe don't use every day, but are vital, vital stuff as a technician. And also you notice this giant hutch up on the top. This is a hutch that I built myself about six years ago. I think I have maybe 250 bucks, 300 bucks into it. It's cool, it's got speakers, it's got lights, it's got my clock, all of uh, my stuff on the back pegged. Got a couple of, of course, VW Hot Wheels as well. So I'm gonna take you guys through each drawer of this box. Now also understand that I didn't go through and straighten this box up or organize everything any different than I keep it every day. I, it was important to me that you guys see it exactly how it exists all the time. Uh, some drawers are really organized, some aren't quite so much. So with that, let's check it out. All right, let's start up on the top here. You can see that I have a handful of chargers. That's my cobalt charger, as well as my Makita charger. As we pan over, these are old school VW training books, as well as some old taillights from my Passat. Then on this side, we have the Snap-on charger and the Milwaukee charger and a really, really old school VW certification uh, award. This, if any of you are old school VW techs, probably remember this. I don't even remember what was inside of here. These are pretty deep deep shelves. Typically, I have a bunch more crap piled up in here, uh, but I had pulled some stuff off actually for some spring cleaning about two weeks ago. As we move down, we can see more training booklets, some old owner's manuals that I've come across over the years, a handful of FSI followers. This is actually really cool. This is a little beetle soap that, uh, that a customer got for me. Moving down, I keep one scan tool on my toolbox. We have an extra one in the shop. There's usually one that has some kind of issue. So I keep that one here. It may also live on the bench next door. As we come across, I got a big work service, another Milwaukee charger. This is the block to the VR6. That's what's hiding inside of this trash bag. A uh, couple of long drill bits that I borrowed from somebody that they just haven't come back to get yet. I like this. I like having this open work surface. Well, typically open work surface when, <laughs> when, when the VR block is not on top of it. If you look at the back, I actually have a handful of plugs. This plug strip that goes along the back side. Pegboard, again, a couple of Hot Wheels, a clipboard that I used to use all the time. What wouldn't a toolbox of mine be without a few beer stickers, of course? The speakers, the lights are actually unplugged. I think I had three of them out and I was not really wanting to replace the bulbs in them, so I just disconnected them. Here's some narrow shelving. I actually designed these narrow shelves with the idea that I was gonna put a radio in one, like a car stereo. I just never got around to doing it. As we come along to the side, I have more pegboard on the side. You can see a throttle depressor, pieces of my extractor, cock gun, and a C-clamp for brakes. Come around on the other side here. This is just a massive amount of important documents that I store over, uh, over on the right side. So that's the hutch. Again, I built that myself. Pretty cool, pretty cool hutch. I figured I had about 10 shots before uh, I met the price of a snap-on one. And uh, it came out really well, although it's about a foot taller than I had really intended it. Let's go ahead and open up the drawers and check out what's inside. All right, like I said, this is unmanipulated. Uh, Half-inch drive stuff lives, <laughs> lives on this side. I didn't realize what exactly that said, but uh, this is a broken socket that someone borrowed and gave back to me. I wrote the note on it. So half-inch drive, as well as some half-inch drive tools. This is an old Craftsman torque wrench that I think worked one time and then stopped working. Uh, and then I proceeded to smash it, but I still keep it in there just as like a basic ratchet. At the front of the drawer is a lot of spare parts. Anything from relays to bulbs, old keys, wheel caps, spark plugs. This is sort of a top drawer junk section things that you don't ever want to throw out because there's still some value. And it may not be me that needs it at some point, but odds are in some way, 
someone might need that. Moving on, we have our 3 8 drive section. Of course, Allen's, what Eurotech would exist without every bit of Allen wrench they could find. The rarely used standard sockets, actually rarely used metric sockets too. Some 12 points, some inverted torques. These are actually for the front bracing for my Cabrio, I think for like a Scirocco insert. This is to install nut certs. It sucks doing it this way, but it's better than not having anything. These VIM uh, triple squares are fantastic. I keep most of them in my roll cart. This is actually my backup set, but uh, these are really, really awesome. I'll link down in the description for you guys to check it out. They're like 40 bucks for the set on Amazon. Highly recommend them. I did. I think I talk about them in my roll cart video too. Moving on, we have some crow's feet. I use this to test 12 volt outlets. Instead of busting the meter out or anything, I just drop this right in. If the light comes on, then we're good to go. It's actually a power probe attachment. Assembly grease from the cabby engine, a hole saw, uh, something that I think I grabbed. I think this is a fuel door actuator out of a Tiguan that I grabbed to do a failed parts video. I found this pretty rusted out. Actually found this as well. A lot of this stuff, as a matter of fact, I've found over the years. Oil filter cups from some old cars, some tape. We've got all our quarter inch drive stuff down here. Not much of this stuff I use day to day. I know I've done a video on custom sockets and tools. This is one of them that I've made years and years and years ago. I actually traded this with someone for a, uh, I gave him an oil filter wrench and he gave me this. What a stupid trade on his part. Coolant testing strips, old ignition switches. This is a syringe for filling a DSG on a hybrid Jetta and a handful of other random knick-knacky caps and clamps and heat shrink bolts, the kind of stuff that it would be awesome if I ever had time to go through, but I don't think that I ever, ever, ever will. This is also the drawer that if I have a bunch of stuff sitting on the top and I'm really ready to go home, this is what happens. I open the drawer, all the stuff goes in, I shut the drawer and I hit the lock. Let's keep moving down. This drawer, I actually have a couple of tools out on loan, so it's not completely full. This is the uh-oh section. These are external extractors. These are internal extractors. This is a thread restore set that I bought from Snap-on, but there's one company that makes them, and you can save a bunch of money by buying this on Amazon. Some extra taps that I've had to purchase over the years. Some really, really bad quality extractor kits. These are pretty much garbage. I just can't bear to throw them away. Again, some bigger taps that aren't in the tap kit. There's a tap kit that's normally right here. I also have a left-handed drill bit set and extractors, as well as an air grinder bit set that usually lives right here, and then my air grinder lives here typically. All that stuff's out on loan for some uh-ohs from a week or so ago. This is an old torque wrench that I got from Harbor Freight. It's not accurate at all anymore, but again, I save it sort of like a ratchet. Uh, these chargers are for a UV light that someone broke and gave back to me, and I don't recall what all of these cables are for. These might be for my bore scope. This is the first torque wrench I ever bought, a beam style torque wrench. Still works just fine, just not something I use every day. A removal wheel, the first torque sticks and sockets that I bought many, many, many years ago, right when I first started, so that would have been probably February or March of 2004. Snap-on air hammer. This thing's a beast. Uh, if, if you want a Big Daddy air hammer, I highly recommend that one. It's fantastic. I've been able to get a lot of things unstuck with that bad boy. A uh, high dollar set of drill bits. These are great drill bits. I bought them from the Snap-on guy. They're expensive, but definitely worth it. This is a 3 8 impact wrench that I have uh, from Capri, and I have been doing some testing on it. I, I owe this a review. Actually, I owe a lot of these tools a review. Uh, two Milwaukee's, here's my quarter inch ratchet and my right angle drill. I got this at Home Depot for like 60 bucks. It's fantastic. It's not super high powered or super high speed, but it works really, really well in tight places. This is a Sonic Tools wheel lock kit. This is pretty cool. It's got all the older wheel locks in it, the square cuts and the star cuts or triangle cut, whatever you call it. Also comes with one of those sockets that has the sleeve on it, which is nice so you don't tear up anybody's wheels. And then what I really like about it is it's got the mapping for where they go. 
so that if you're missing one, you also got the part number of what it is, so you may be able to just order that one. And it tells you how many points. So if you work at a shop and a customer says, I got a 17 point socket that I need uh, a key for, 17 point wheel lock that I need a key for, you pop right to it and it tells you exactly how many it's got. We're gonna actually go over to the left bank and we have an empty drawer. I'll talk about the empty drawers when I'm done here. Uh, here's all of my VW certification stuff. When they pulled the tests from the Master Tech thing, I removed all of them from my toolbox. I didn't really feel like I wanted to display them anymore. A bit of butt hurt, I get it on my part, but I was annoyed, so they all live in this box, uh, toolbox drawer now. And it's just some random papers. This is also where my VADCOM cable typically lives, but it's at my house. Let's keep moving down. Another empty drawer. These drawers are actually kind of hard to fill because they're so shallow. I mean, you can see the drawers aren't very deep. They're not very wide. And by deep, I mean the height of the drawer, so they're not very tall. They are deep. This is a about 28 inches deep of a toolbox. This drawer is typically filled with all my junk, like clean socks and a hat and all that kind of crap. I pulled all this stuff out for some spring cleaning. Uh, it's all in a box right now. It may or may not ever go back in. But this is a fantastic drawer for all that bulky stuff in like blow molded cases and things like that. When I redo or if I ever redo this box, this drawer is going to house most of that kind of stuff. Here we have a plethora of pliers, some spark plug pliers, a lot of small ones. These are all, all the orange handled ones are cornhole, sorry, cornwell. Um, and some, some other stuff as well. There's also a handful of tools at the house for the VR6 build on the cabbie. This drawer typically has a handful of things more in these spaces. Some of the best money I've ever spent is on these blue point spring clamp pliers. They're fantastic. They're not cheap, but they work really well. Same with these. There was a certain job that I bought these for, and the, the job is escaping me now, but it was, um, it was well, well, well worth the money. And finally, some Scotch-Brite pads, and this is a hood prop. So, you know, on the newer stuff that has the hood prop, like the Jettas, when you take the front end off, you lose the hood prop, so you need a, a hood prop rod. Here we have some wrenches. These are all from, obviously, Northern Tool. You may remember these from the best way to store your wrenches video. These get a fair amount of use. It's not an everyday thing, but they're really handy to have when you need them. This is a set of Allens that I bought with my uh, student credit when I went to UTI. I've used them a handful of times. Here we have some standard wrenches and one custom, custom bent 10 millimeter. These are all the random loose metric wrenches that I've collected over the years. You'll notice there's a snap-on one. That's because I had to buy that one twice. This is actually, I had a clutch put in my Integra years and years and years ago, well before I started working on cars. I opened the hood to check the oil and this was uh, hanging on the transmission, so I kept it. Figured I'd earned that. Uh, brake drum tools, which get minimal usage here, of course. <laughs> um, then we have the big boy wrenches. Uh, this is for a V6 Passat viscous coupler, and then there's a handful of things that use 27 millimeter. This is a really great spanner wrench to hold said viscous coupler for the V6 Passats, the old V6, a seal puller. This is a rivet gun that's gotten its fair share of use. All VW speakers are riveted in. This is a wrench that I bought. I probably paid a fortune for. It's got a 17 on one side and a 19 on the other, and it's pretty long, but I never actually got into using it. So it's come in handy once or twice, but it's not something that I've put a lot of miles on. Got some CCTA timing kit parts. You can see the little, the little donut, the most important one, and the cam locks and the spool valve socket. These are crank locks. This is the uh, electrical connector from Schwaben, the release tool that I did a review on years ago lock pin for a diesel, lock pin for V6 Passat and others, and then this is the old school 2 liter and 1.8 turbo um, tensioner tool. This is the screwdriver drawer, various assorted screwdrivers, a lot of snap-on stuff. This was a kit that I also got fresh out of school. 
a uh, pretty nice ratcheting one. I had a an Audi one of these years ago that I traded stupidly to someone else. A crappy busted Craftsman screwdriver. Some high voltage stuff that's not super necessary around here. These are my really cheap Husky screwdrivers that I bend, break, and do whatever I need to do to get a job done. I don't really care about them. This is a battery terminal puller. It's actually, I got it to pull wiper blades off of uh, off wiper transmissions. It works all right. Pickle forks. This one's got some use. Most of them, other ones haven't. Handful of files. These expansion valves. These are back from when we were doing two liter BPY AC systems all the time. We actually found that if you just drilled it out, rather than using the VW special tool, it worked a thousand times better. And of course, some chisels and punches. We keep moving down. Now we're starting to get into some wider drawers. More blow molded cases stuff, a lot of diagnosis stuff, uh, ratcheting pliers. These are big boy Allens that are impact. So back when we were doing Passat CV axle boots all day long, this one got quite a workout. Also a really old school set of Cornwell Allens. These, uh, these wobble ones got a pretty good workout back in the day when we were doing Mark IV 12 valve VR6 intake runners all the time. And then I also have a set of standard ones, which is cool. This was back when we had a Cornwell, a Cornwell guy. Haven't had that in 10 years, probably, maybe longer. This is actually pre-Charles being a professional technician. This is all old car audio stuff that I've accumulated over the years. Some terminals and some fuse holders and stuff. Every once in a while I have to dip in and grab these aftermarket radio keys, but for the most part this has been the same for 15 years. Got a brake disc micrometer for measuring brake rotors. I've used it a handful of times. It's not something we do all that often, usually only under warranty. One thing I, I find interesting about this box is if you tend to only open the drawer this far most of the time, it'll actually sort of build up the grease and create a, basically a stop, and you kind of got to snatch it open like that. Snap-on vacuum gauge, another one of the fresh out of school things. This is actually a VW first aid kit. Uh, I've talked about this kit on Facebook a ton of times. This is a great kit to have. It's not cheap but has bailed me out a ton of times. It's got the spreader for suspension parts and a handful of triple squares. I bought it for this socket to do a manual transmission service on a Mark IV R32. The must-have alternator pulley kit for the ones with the, uh, the clutch in it. This is an amp clamp that doesn't really work anymore. Uh, this is a snap-on or blue point audio listening device, so there's a little microphone in there to help you find noises. It works all right. Stethoscope, soldering iron, and a starter trigger button. Moving down, the bottom drawer of this in the middle is the extra parts drawer. You can see there's tons of extra parts. I'm not going to go through each and every one of these things. Don't worry, they've all been accumulated honestly. No leaving out of parts or anything. Unlike my yellow toolbox drawer where we had some fun, this stuff was either technician misdiagnosis, you know, probably a handful of them by me, or around the shop, bolts, someone ordered too many, someone ordered extra, things that I keep around for testing purposes, or again, like that top drawer, you know, eventually, whether it's me or someone else, someone's probably going to need this stuff. That's why I just can't bear to throw these things away. Moving up, this is kind of my personal junk drawer, a lot of receipts. Uh, tattoo lotion. I added this little this little lock box so uh, I could leave the box unlocked but lock this too. Handful of stuff. Usually if it's like a personal thing and I don't know what to do with it I throw it in here an old pocket knife. Some GTI badging. Some extra printer paper. This OBD interface I found in a car or someone else found and gave to me. And our uh, Golf R steering column trim. This is a little little picture someone drew for me here at the shop. Expired Chick-fil-A milkshake card. H&R Springs. But a lot of just you know change, loose change. This is this is basically my personal junk drawer 
a spark plug Christmas ornament VW sent out a couple of years ago. And that's why if you guys watched Eric's toolbox tour, him and I have the same box. You'll notice that this drawer is in a different position in his box. This, this drawer on his box is down here. So what I did was I removed all these drawers and I took this one and moved it to the top because I like to have this deep drawer to throw all my stuff in. Plus, then I could put, I don't remember if this came with the box or I bought it separate. I have this slide in here now so I can put change and pens and 80 different touch-up paints in it. So this, you know, some of this stuff's pretty hard to organize and, and group together. This old Mac scraper set, some really, really tiny torque screws, some a little bit bigger tiny torque screws, and here's all my bits. These are actually iPhone screwdrivers. Uh, these Blue Point little ratchets are fantastic. They're a high tooth count, so you don't have to move it a ton. I had some other ones that were absolute garbage. This I bought at Harbor Freight before I even started working on cars. This little set right here, though, of these snap-on torques are fantastic. Actually, the one that's missing lives in my roll cart, the T20. Here's my electrical drawer. This is uh, digital calipers from Harbor Freight or Northern Tool, I forget. And, you know, just uh, some handful of stuff. A lot of this kind of stuff lives in my roll cart, too. These are airbag screwdrivers for older cars. This is my FLIR 1 cable pin tools to release wiring pins. These are all my personal ones that I've purchased over the years. The blue point temperature gauge. It's nice in here. This is a Torag headlight removal tool that I took out of a totaled car a decade ago, probably. An empty drawer. This one typically is piled high with wires. And in fact, this drawer is empty because I did some consolidation of wires and gave a bunch out to the guys in the shop. And we don't really do big count wiring repairs as much as we used to. A lot of this stuff came from the B5 and a half generation, B5 generation. When we were doing water leaks and repairing TCMs and convenience modules, you'd need 40, 40 of these or 35 of these or 20 of those in order to properly repin that connector. Since we don't do a ton of that anymore, this collection has dwindled down over the years. But again, this was this was piled to the max. So you'd usually see like a bag hanging out of this drawer when it was closed. Uh, just nothing super important. Some magazines that I'll turn to every once in a while. Actually, some of this stuff I think came out of the bottom drawer. Some old leather samples that I saved for Lord knows why. Right there, this is an old repair order that I saved back when we actually did a lot of good gravy work and customers pay, bought repairs. So that's like a 20 hour ticket. I save it just for nostalgia purposes. Moving down, this is a drawer that could absolutely have more tools in it other than my engraver and my OTC slide hammer set. This is one of the only drawers though that's deep enough uh, for this to fit without taking up a bunch of room. It would actually make way more sense if I moved the slide hammer over to here and these things over in this drawer. But again, since I'm not in and out of this box all day every day, it's not super important to be as efficient as I can be. And then here's a lot of weird sized things, extra battery, test lights. This is a vacuum, a bearing packer, a ratchet strap. There's some old drill bits way down here at the bottom, some test wires, a bearing seal race installer. And this is my old uh, case for my brake tool from, uh, from Lyle. A cutoff wheel, an axle press, and that kind of stuff. Moving on, so that's the box, moving on, you can see I, I hoard a lot of things. These are all wire connectors. Again, every once in a while you run into a situation where someone breaks a connector and you just come over here and find, <laughs> find your connector and cut it and, and, and go on with life. Most of this stuff back here is pretty much the same or a different version or things that I've saved to do videos on at some point. This is a Toast CCTA block that I'm probably gonna do a timing chain video on at some point, so that'll be coming home. Some random alternators that I found in the metal scrap bin. We might be taking those apart and uh, diving into how alternators work. I sort of have a workbench. Here's another alternator. This is actually from my cabbie VR6 engine. Uh, I've been test driving these vampire tools, vampires. These things are awesome. Uh, I got a review coming out on these. You guys 
everybody needs a pair of these. These are fantastic. It's even I even destroyed these by using them on the wrong stuff, and they still work super good. Eurowise mount for my VR, and a handful more parts. Someone left that on a used car. Uh, steering wheel, some old t TDI Passat parts. Those gray frames are my fabulous certification awards. You see where I keep them hidden away on a bookshelf. This is the manifold that goes with this engine block down here. Some wheels, extra tires. These are all destroyed wheels. Actually, this is the one that I curbed. You can see the damage right there. It's cheaper to buy another wheel than it was to have that one fixed. As we move to my cabinet right over here, I just found out that someone decided to jerk on this and break the handle. So that's super awesome and I really appreciate one of my coworkers doing that for me. We'll go ahead and open it from the top then, I guess. I like this cabinet because it has deep pockets in the doors. So this is just, you know, random stuff. Air tool oil, some butane, the bastard gas for uh, my little torches. You can see I got a lot of spare parts in here. Just random, random spare parts, a bunch of old filters that parts was gonna throw away, but I managed to save. A lot of test ECMs and TCMs and a secondary air pump that I told someone I would look for for them. That's right there. Coil pack for testing purposes. As we move up, these are uh, the chassis ears. There's a lot of power probe stuff in here. A bunch of just blow molded case type stuff. This is actually something I wanted to make sure I mentioned. These things are fantastic. These tub of towels, I know Eric has them too. Um, these are awesome for tools because you're not spraying or putting any harsh, harsh stuff on it. So like it won't take the paint off of your tools. It won't yellow the or white the plastic. They work fantastic and they're stupid cheap. They're so, so cheap. So I'll link these up down in the description. My wife loves them too. She uses it more than I do, to be honest. And then, you know, Anybody remember what these things are? Make sure you comment in if you remember what those are. Get you in there a little bit closer so you can see. I'm sure some of you guys remember those. Some old spray paint from the cabbie, the cabbie engine days. Old box of P9 recall, dumb dumb as they call it. The valve cover for the GTI. That's a box of Mark IV parts right back there. Extension cords. Engine paint, this is what I'm gonna to use to paint the engine of the GTI. Drawer liners, this can of NICs I bought before I moved to North Carolina, so it's 15 years old almost. And then moving on, here's just a bunch of other random junk that I have. Some of this, a lot of this is actually what I pulled out of the toolbox for some spring cleaning. All my SSPs and uh, ASE training, electric parts, and some, some just random old stuff, safety sandals more training books. A lot of this stuff came out of the hutch. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's the red toolbox in a nutshell. Remember that I've done a tour of my yellow box at the, at the shop. Uh, I hope you guys have seen that one. I've done a tour of my roll cart and I've done a tour of the blue Sonic box. When it comes to working at the dealership, I'm primarily working out of my roll cart. So you may be wondering, Charles doesn't have this tool or Charles doesn't have that tool. Uh, one, I may not have it, or it may actually be in my roll cart or again, there are a few tools out on loan today, and there's some stuff in my car or at the house for the GTI build. But this is basically what it looks like inside the red box at the shop. Now there are a couple of empty drawers. Actually, there is no reason for me to have a toolbox this big. I could reorganize this stuff and even crush it down more. So one thing I always recommend to people, make sure you're buying the right toolbox for you. Don't need to spend, you know, this retails now for like $12,000, which is absolutely insane of an amount of money to spend on a toolbox when I could have easily gotten away with, you know, a $1,000 toolbox or a $900 toolbox to simply put my tools in. I don't regret the decision. I really like this toolbox. But for any of you thinking about purchasing something like this, keep in mind that you may not need quite as much space as you think you do. Now, of course, there's room for me to grow into this, but there's a lot of other ways that I could grow into a toolbox without simply spending or having this big of a box. So there you have it. I hope you guys liked it. If you have questions, comments, you know where they go. 
like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and ding that notification bell. You can also subscribe over at humblemechanic.com for updates there. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course on Snapchat. Hey, if you want exclusive content you can get nowhere else, as well as discounts to places like Eurowise, Black Forest, MT Knives, Sonic Tools, Adams Polishes, Eastwood, Scanner Danner's Diagnosis Book, and more, check out the crew membership program. There's a link down in the description. It's a great way to get awesome discounts, exclusive content, like I said, and help support me and the show and help me literally, well, maybe not here, but at the house, literally keep the lights on. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.